Michelle. Hello there. Good morning. Um, how are you today? Right. I'm going to going to we're going to make a quilted pouch today. Um, so we'll do that when um, when I've said hello to everybody. So a bit bit late today, aren't I? It's four minutes past. I forgot the time. I was actually filming a video on how to make this. And I just didn't realise what the time was. So there you go. Um, hello, good morning, Megan, Shelley, Sally Ann, Christine, Tina, Tina, and Alf, Julie, and Crystal, and Linda and Grace, and a pretty windows in Ireland. Pam, hello to you too. Sorry I've missed anybody. Uh, Nancy in Ohio, hello. And Anne, Jane, what time is it now? Oh, oh no, we're Wednesday, aren't we? Not too. Are we Wednesday? No, it's Saturday. It's really early for you, isn't it? About six o'clock in the morning. Um, hello, Susan, Sheila, Linda, Amanda, Steph, Janet, all on on uh, Facebook, and Carol, Carol, Anna Kay, and Jan and Jean and Sarah. All is very well at short hours. Thank you very much. We're rather damp today. Um, at least Bobbin's been out for a week before the rain got heavy, so... Is, yes, I am live at the moment. You shouldn't just have a screenshot. I should be there, Julie. Uh, morning, Janet, Celia. Morning, Jeanette. Beautiful sky after a windy, wet night in Plymouth, says Laura. Um, glad you were late. Had a late shower and just sat down. Yeah, not normally late. Don't like being late. Sorry about that. Um, waterlogged in Devon, says Jane. Dorothy, hello. And uh, Sharon, hello to you. Amanda, oh, aren't we busy today? Loads of us. Sarah, hello. Beautiful in Cornwall, watching upstairs behind the ironing board. I hope it's ironing sewing related things, not your domestic chores. Um, Eilish and uh, Daryl, hello. Hello, Susan. Hello, Ellen. Anyway, um, new fabrics are arriving for Wednesday, so we're going to have a quiet weekend this weekend. But I have taken back stock from Create and Craft. Did anybody see the show that we did the other day on Thursdays? Um, we had brand new Madison bags and um, a few panels for you as well. And that Eden panel that's been really popular in a different kit formation. So I've, I've brought back. And normally they keep everything for a couple of weeks. And I've told them they're not having it. So th they've got a few. Uh, so I just wanted to show you the Madison bag. I haven't actually got the bag here. I've got to bring it down. Um, it's a slightly different kit to the one we had on Crate and Craft. Sorry about the noise of this. I know that cellophane is really noisy. So in here, you'll have your outer fabric. You'll have your um, bottom fabric. So that's the top of the bag. That's the bottom of the bag. A silver chain and clasp white embroidery thread and lining fabric you will have lining fabric with it as well and your full instructions and a pattern on how to make them and if you have a look on the website we do have two color options in this as well so there's the white or you can go for a burgundy so i'll pop that back in there later because it's very noisy over you go we do have the eden tote bag kits as well so you might, have, you might have bought these, they work out the same price. Um, so in here you've got the Eden panel, backing fabric, a magnetic snap and your uh, zip. And these will make, oh Linda's bought the new Madison bag, thank you. We'll just take out the instructions for this one. Oh, out you come. You'll be able to make a tote bag and a cushion with the one panel but of course you can mix and match these together so you don't have to make those they just happen to come with those instructions we will be having those as downloads on the website as well maybe later on today we'll do that in a bit and the final set that we had on creation craft is this one and we do have those eden panels on their own by the way so if you don't want to go for the whole complete kit if you've got everything that you need to make whatever you want then um then those are on the website on their own as well <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And there's four colour options in those. I just showed you the olive, but there is a mustard, a taupe, and... Oh, no, we've sold out of the navy one now, I'm afraid. Now, this one... Sorry about the rustling. Is the... I shan't take all of those out. This one's the Van Gogh fabric that Kim designed, which was really popular. This is all brand new. So, again, we've got the kits... 
We will be having some of the fabrics in half meter pieces as well, but it may be a week or so before we can get those on. Um, so these are all Van Gogh paintings in, in, quirky little, um, in quirky little frames. So in the kit, if you go for that, you will have a panel that size, which is a massive fat quarter. And there is enough in here to make up a pencil case and a brush roll. So they're really simple projects. So that making noise again. And again, we will have these as downloads on the website later on today if you just want to make a makeup uh, bag, um, a pencil case or a brush roll. So those are the, the two projects that you can make. And in here, you've got your H640. Um, you've got ribbon to tie them with and the zip and um, royal blue lining fabric too. So just wanted to show you those because normally Create and Craft get an exclusive for a couple of weeks, so we can't get hold of anything for you, but we have sweet talk them around so we do have some on the website there as well so uh, hello brenda in kentucky if you have a look on debbieshawsewing.com don't forget if you're a half yard club member to use that 10 percent discount code um not much pam i was just showing you the um i need to make a case for a pad and flower forming tools oh okay i don't know what those are um i'm just sh showing you some of the things that we had on Crate and Craft that we got on the website early, just in case. Uh, Denise says, big bundle of mixed fabric arrived, great selection. And they, they are big pieces. Some of them are almost half a meter big. Um, Boogie the Schnooky, hello. Um, thanks, Megan. Hello, Bloodwood, morning to you. Uh, beautiful Madison Bag and They are, aren't they? They're, we're really pleased with those. Uh, we won't be getting those fabrics back in again um, for the Madison bags. So we're trying to get as many as we can put together with what we've got. No problem, Denise. Hello, Kim. Linda's got her Maddie book. Oh, that Maddie book. Wait, wait, it actually went up to, in hot new releases on Amazon, number 20. It shot up to number 20 of all books. So you've got Prince Harry. I'm just looking for Prince Harry at number one. And we were 19 places behind royalty. Oh no, that wasn't it. That was it. Just knocked something on the floor. Um, yeah, so that was the book. I'm so pleased with this one. Um, I've had such good feedback from it as well. It officially launches. Well, if you've ordered from Amazon, it should be going out on the fifth, on the 13th, next Sunday on Create and Craft. Um, we're going to be launching it there. I'm trying to get some Maddie printed fabric made as well, but I'm not sure if it's going to be ready in time for next week because I haven't had the samples to approve yet. So that may be something that we just do on the website and that'll be a kit to make a case to keep her clothes in. Um, so yeah, and actually in number, again on Amazon, because that's the only kind of charts that I can access, um, it went up to number one in Toys and Dolls. Oh no, in the bestsellers list. So pleased because it's not supposed to be out yet. So thank you very much for anybody that ordered. Um, hello, Zainab in Dubai. Uh, Linda's got hers from Chris from before Christmas. Uh, Jackie needs to get the basics start making her. Hello, Cheryl in Pittsburgh in the US of A. Uh, the face on the Mighty Dolly, I've embroidered it. She's all embroidered. Um, I shan't get it down. But the let me show you in the book. So. It's a close-up. Let's have a look at the instructions and I'll show you. So how to use pattern pieces. And there it is. So she's all embroidered. Um, I've drawn on with an erasable ink pen. Do be careful of these bleaching. Again, it did bleach some of the fabrics out to start again. Um, so you might be as well using a, 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 a maybe a transfer sheet. Um, if you didn't want to embroider, you could use fabric pens. But every, everything on there is embroidered, apart from her freckles, which I did use a fabric pen for, and they were just dotted across the top of her nose. So the pattern's in the back of the book. You will have a pattern for the face as well. So if you wanted to get um, some transfer paper, like carbon paper, that kind of thing, then you can just draw over the top of the, of the face straight onto your fabric. And I'd suggest you do that, actually. I don't know if I did that in the book, before you cut out your pattern piece because you can place it exactly where you want it to be then. But has anybody made it yet, the new Maddie? Who was I talking to this morning or emailing me this morning saying that, oh gosh, can't remember, sorry. Um, she's made the doll and then it was going to be an outfit a month for a granddaughter. I thought that was such a lovely idea. 
I always look through books back to, <coughs> gosh, excuse me, back to, <coughs> have a look at that for a second. So sorry about that. I just there's something stuck in my throat. <coughs> Didn't want to hear that, did you? You've gone all watery now. I oh, don't know what happened there. Um, notice said delivery muddy book twenty third of Feb. What was that? Oh, brandy in Kentucky. Always takes longer to get to America. Teresa's just bought it. Sally's just nipped away to order the Madison bag. If we sell out of the Madison bag, which I think we will. Uh, we are having some more put together. Um, oh, oh, that's so sweet, Brenda. Brenda printed a photo of her granddaughter, traced her features, and she opened it and said, it's me. Oh, how sweet. Um, yes, if, you, um, if we do sell out, go to the product that you want. That's on anything on the website. And there'll be um, a thing saying, keep me informed. And if you put your email address in there or your ticket if you're already logged in. Sorry, my voice has gone now, hasn't it? How weird. <coughs> um, you'll get an email when it comes back in stock again because if we sell out today hopefully by the end of the week we're going to get things back in again so do do that it's, pro it's probably watching now but it's only just gone back down again and it's raining um, <laughs> thank you Dawn's got her elephant fat quarters we've got some more of those on order as well hopefully they'll be at the beginning of the week um, the little dress that Maddie's wearing on the front cover which is the one just behind her there the green one came from the blue version of the elephant fat colours there's blue and green in there we can't get it by the metre anymore because it's it's quite an old fabric now but um we are getting some more back, uh, fat quarters back in stock you'll need two so you'll, you'll have to order two packs so you will have quite a bit left over but you can make some more outfits from for for the rest of it as well <laughs> i'm okay biz it's gone now uh, no jenny i just got something stuck in my throat i don't know what it was um, but no, all, all okay now. Thank you for your concern, but we're all good. Hi, Janet. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it doesn't normally happen when I'm talking to people like like this. You can have a good old cough when you're on your own, but it's not so pleasant when you're um, when you're on live streams. Anyway, should we do some sewing? Oh, we do still have lots of sales stuff on the website, by the way, if you wanted to have a look at those. Um, but we we are expecting. Um, some quite big orders from suppliers coming in this week, so by Wednesday. Oh, and we've got the next Lewis and Iron collection going on pre-order, if you take a look for that as well. Not done that before. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry, Susan. Um, thank you for joining us today. Please take your mind off things for a little while. Tea boy when you need him, I know. Megan's Maddie books arriving today. Hello, Cuffy. Right, shall we make this pouch? <clears throat> oh, the fabric. I can't remember what the fabric's called, actually. This is, the, do you remember they, we launched this uh, last week? Um, and there was a zebra and an elephant fabric that went with it. I know Megan had the elephant, did you not? Um, but that's the one that goes with it. And I thought I'd use uh, this. This is one in the video. So I've used that fabric with a pomegranate pink, which it worked really well. For this one, I'm going to use some of the Lynette Anderson. This is one of my favourite ranges we've had on the website, which actually goes very well with the pomegranate. Um, but I'm using that with a little bit of Hannah's flowers for the lining. It's a little creased, isn't it? We'll sort that out in a minute. And I'm going to put a pocket on the inside of this one as well. So it fastens with a popper. If you bought poppers for Maddie, because there are lots of poppers, there's poppers on shirts and poppers on dresses and poppers on, uh, the, 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 she's gone popper crazy. There's even poppers on Mo's collar and on her shoes actually. Um, but you can have loads left over. So if you do have poppers, they, these are ideal. Poppers are really easy to fit easier than buttons and you do them after you finish the whole thing as well so you can be very exact as to where that's going to go so anyway so that's what we're doing <clears throat> let me give you some measurements i feel i've forgotten something oh my ruler underneath matting that's probably something i need 
Anyway, one of those mornings, isn't it? Hi, June. Uh, right, so <clears throat> 21 inches by 10. So you need two pieces of fabric measuring those, one for the outside, one for the lining. And I've put some H640. Oh yes, Janet, don't iron over poppers, they're plastic, good point. Um, I put H640 on the back of this one. You could use H630. You could use any kind of medium to firm interfacing for this one. And then my pocket <coughs> measures seven inches by 10 inches and I've used the same fabric as the lining fabric for that one. You could use the same as the outer if you wanted to as well. This is actually one of the Hannah's Flowers fabric, the Lewis and Irene, so they're not the same collection but the colours look as though they've been made to go together, don't they? Um, right, now I'm going to quilt this first of all because I think it looks nice and I think quilting gives it a plush kind of finish. <coughs> so I put my roller down again. So I've just done two inch squares, um, so I've just, it's, oh, I've missed loads of you on Facebook, sorry, you stuck, you weren't scrolling. Um, I'll let her made a tote bag for a sister at Christmas from one of the videos, thank you. Um, horrible, I've got, oh, Zoe's got a chest infection on, on antibiotics along with, flu no, <coughs> I hope you get better soon. Um, right. Brenda, you're right. There are so many patterns to download on the Half Yard Sewing Club. There's, uh, there's at least 24 and maybe more than that. There's, um, because you, you've got 48 projects when you join all together. Hello, uh, Snizana. That's a nice name in Serbia. Hello to you. Um, this will be good for all our different connections for our electrical good. That's a d good idea. They're all in everything in the kitchen that will tidy them up. Megan's parcels just arrived. Good for them delivering on a Saturday. So, <clears throat> I'm going to place the 45 degree mark across the edge of the fabric. <coughs> A little bit further down, so my, <coughs> gosh, excuse me. So my ruler covers that. And draw my first line. Test these pens, remember, I can't stress enough. Then I'm going to go two inches away from that line and draw another one and do this all across the fabric. I thought I'd start from scratch from this because uh, you know, could have prepped and done half of it beforehand, but it doesn't actually take very long. So if you don't want to use a heat erasable pen, if that does scorch your fabric, then try chalk. Water and air erasable, I don't tend to use because um, <coughs> If you iron them, they become permanent and it always worries me a little bit because I do a lot of ironing as I'm pressing. A little one at the end there. Then we'll turn this around and go in the opposite direction to complete that. Might be quite nice just, just done diagonally, you know. How do you think about that? <clears throat> I kind of like that. Should we just do it that? Because when this is made up, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as one line. If you wanted to do twice, then turn your fabric around and we're not going to use the 45 degree line. We'll use one of the straight lines across the ruler and pop that over one of the lines that you've just drawn and then do the same across there to make the check. But I kind of like that stripe. Right, and then we're going to quilt it. <coughs> Hello, Paula in Texas. How can I purchase your Maddie book? Um, have a look on Amazon. It won't be out yet, but you should be able to pre-order it on Amazon in the States. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Carol, and to you too. Right. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, that was for Carol. Quilted bag. Oh, talking to each other. Love that. Kate always marks the back. That is a good idea. If you have, um, particularly if you're using foam, you can mark it. I find it quite difficult to mark on fleece. Um, but good idea to mark the back. Because then it doesn't matter if it marks, does it? So I'm going to put the stitch length up to number three on this one because it's not a, a structural stitch, so it doesn't have to be um, short and strong. And just sew across all the lines. Oh, Bonnie, um, I know you emailed about that earlier. I was, I've got everything ready to make the nappy pouch 
and the thing I haven't got is a nappy and um, it was going to be for nappy, a couple of nappies in one side and a, a pack of baby wipes in the other side but I need to get a nappy and some baby wipes so I can get it the right size. So I either need my grandson to visit or a, a trip to the shops. So I thought next Saturday, Bonnie, if that's okay, we'll do that. Bonnie asked me to make a, um, a pouch to store spare nappies and things in for new mums because um, she's been asked for them for baby showers. But I just thought if we make a pouch that's, that will accommodate those, but you can put other things in there, maybe um, face masks or cleaning wipes or something like that. Because I, I don't like to do projects that are only for one use, because if it was something that would only carry nappies, not everybody wants to carry a nappy around with them. So that was, that was my plan. So yeah, you were going to get it today, Bonnie, but got to buy the goods first. <coughs> oh, we've got Lisa. I don't think she's here today. Um, oh, we've got Rita, though. Hello, Rita doing the sampler of the stitches for my new machine. That's a good idea. Morning, Sharon. Oh, Tracy's going to a baby shower at the end of the month, so it would be great. Okay, then definitely next Saturday. Now, I've got a question for you. I was talking to Kim earlier, because um, we were talking about what, um, what techniques I'm going to do on Wednesday. And I... I vaguely remember last Wednesday saying, we'll do that next week then. I can't remember what it was. I must bring a notepad down here and write things down. Can't remember. So can anybody remember what I'm supposed to be doing on Wednesday? If not, I've got another plan. I don't want to go in there with plan two and then get emails saying, you said you were going to do this on Wednesday. Bonnie's very pleased. Don't let me forget that next week. <laughs> Looking for a notepad to write things down. Hi, Cheryl. Mitered corners. Oh, was it a mitre? Were we doing mitered corners? Oh, okay. I don't remember saying that at all. Are we doing mitered corners on Wednesday? Got some paper. Wednesday, mitered corners. Saturday, baby bag, pouch. Now I'll forget where this is, won't I? Uh, oh yeah, mitered corners it is. Do you know, I have no recollection of doing mitered corners. Honestly. <clears throat> Um, Sue's going to be a first time grandma. Congratulations. Oh, your sister on told her, your, your daughter told you on Christmas Day. What, what better present? <laughs> How exciting. Right, I'm just going to iron away the pen marks on this one. So it looks quite nice just with the diagonal, doesn't it? So you never know where things end up once you start sewing. <laughs> Yes, Elsie, I do that a lot as well. I know I've written it down. I wrote everything down in a book, but I can't find a book. I normally keep the book at the side of my PC, but uh, it's, not, it's not always there. Um, a baby bug pouch. Oh, OK. Oh, that's going to be a really popular one then. Twin and grandbaby. I, I tell you what, um, now we've, I've, and I've got plenty of notice as to what I'm doing. I'll do a video beforehand as well, so you can just watch the YouTube video if you don't want to sit through the live stream. <laughs> Wadding. Was it wadding? No, I was going to get some wadding and show you. I need to actually pick some up from the um, from the office. Wadding. 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 I should be down there on Monday. Um, <clears throat> after my meeting at Create and Craft about Seamless Sunday, which is on the fifteenth. So the Maddie will be on there, they'll have the Maddie book and um, what have we got? Trisha's going to join us. Um, Daisy Chain Sewing. Lemon Lane. See this one, I have no idea. Um, Crafty Lass. 
I should find out more on Monday and I shall let you know. But that's the six hour show next Sunday. Um, so that'll be from seven in the morning till one in the afternoon. So if you can join us for any part of that, that would be very nice. I shall have some new quiz questions to perplex my co-presenters. Um, I don't, I've never kept notes on my phone, um, Mary. That would, that, I'll, I should figure that out. That would be a good idea. I, I prefer writing things down, to be honest. I've still got a diary. I don't, I don't do that on my phone. Bit old fashioned there, I suppose. Um, yeah, Pat uses hers for phone, her phone for lists as well. Hmm. Linda's granddaughter went on a swing for the first time yesterday. Oh, but that was exciting. Huh. Right. I'm going to round off the corners of this one. So I'm just using a saucer. And let's do this. I didn't realise I picked a posh one. I've got a bit of Wedgwood here. Like that. That's about, let me measure that. I'd say six inches. Six inches across. It doesn't have to be. That's the first thing I picked up. And let's cut around here. You can write it down and take a picture of the list. Oh, now that's a good idea. That would be easier. So let's do that. Uh, my daughter rules the world from her phone. I know I couldn't work without the phone. I don't know what we used to do before we had phones. Just going to iron this. Do you remember? Um, if you're of, of that, to get, I remember, do, do you actually remember having your first phone in the house, the first landline? Um, I do. We had it at the bottom of the stairs, you know, the big chunky things with the dials on the front, and um, we waited for our first phone call to come through, which, which was from my auntie. And phone numbers had four numbers in those days because not everybody had a phone, and we all waited around the phone. Um, to um, for my auntie to ring and the phone rang and my mum had to answer the phone because it was an historic event and I, can't, I think it was no that was my grandma's number anyway my, my grandma's phone number at the time which is the only one I can remember was 5654 and um, you'd go 5654 very exciting and then phone numbers went up to six numbers Oh, and do you remember uh, you'd have uh, you'd have a dialing code, which would probably be three numbers or two numbers. No, three numbers. But if you were dialing somebody in the next village, you had a special two number code. So if I was dialing my mate in the next village, I think it was eight seven instead of the whole big Nottingham number. And London was oh one and oh two. Remember that? Yes, yeah, very exciting getting a phone. But now, be before we had mobile phones, before we we could communicate with people um, at any time we wanted to like that. If you had an appointment to see somebody, you just jolly well like to be there, didn't you? I can remember driving to work. It was when I was modelling. Um, on a few occasions, I was going to be late. So, and you think, well, do, do I just be late 10 minutes or do I be late 20 minutes because now I've got to come off the road and find a phone box and that's going to make me even later. But that would be the polite thing to do, but that's going to make you late. You just have to make sure you were there on time. So there, there was none of this, oh, I'll, I'll, meet, you at, I'll, I'll meet you outside Rambies. Um, at four o'clock, I'll, I'll give you a ring when I'm nearly there. Now you can't, you couldn't do that. You had to just be there outside Rambies at four o'clock. Do you remember Rambies? Right, so I'm just cutting the lining to the same shape. I've used the outer fabric as a template for the lining. <clears throat> oh, Tracy's sewing with a granddaughter today. Lovely, that's a nice day. Um, how much stash do you have? Is it all from, is it all, to, oh no, sorry, talking to somebody else. Rita's got a big stash, I know that. And I don't suppose we're the only people she shops with. So I would imagine Rita's got a huge stash. Right, so I've just I've done that. So two pieces together, right? Party I never had a party line. Um but yeah, we'd, you'd share the line, wouldn't you? So you'd pick it up and you could hear somebody else speaking, is that right? Olive hasn't had a mobile for over a week, so we're doing for a new one. Do you feel like your hand's been chopped off? Susan had a party line. <laughs> Rita starting a fabric store. You could you'd probably have enough fabric to do that. Um, Denise had a party line. Oh, Debbie Fabrics. Go on. Go on. Yeah, fixed to the, fixed to the wall in the hall. You, there was nothing mobile about phones. In fact, the first phone I had in my car was fixed to the car. That was before 
mobile phones came along. Reversing charges from a phone box, yes. Um, what would, you, would you dial 100 or something? Like reverse the, and then the operator, do you remember operators, would have to phone the number and say, will you accept the charges from this person? And you'd hope that they'd say yes. My dad was 71 when he got a landline, really. We never use ours now. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, shows how to insert the heart class from the website. If I've got any, I can, Laura. I don't know if I've got any here. No, never used to ring the talking clock. You used to ring dial a disc. Did you have those in America, Rita? You'd, you'd, just, you'd be on your phone and you'd dial 1-6 and it'd play a record. Remember records? Um, Solveig, I'm making a pouch. Just one of those, quite simple and easy. Money box next to the phone, yeah. Um, yes, we weren't allowed to use the phone. And in fact, um, w well, if we were told we couldn't use the phone, we didn't use it, that was that. Um, but my best mate's mum actually put a key, like a, a lock and a key in the dial, so you couldn't dial more than one. Um, don't think I was born yet. <laughs> oh, Gaynor was an operator back in the day. Oh, really? Wow. So does anybody else, uh, did anybody else phone, um, what was the one for the time, the talking clock? Tim the talking clock, is that what it was called? We had a neighbour who waited outside the phone box to pick up. Once I had to knock on her door, she had a call waiting for her. <gasps> We've got a phone box opposite. I wonder if whoever lived in our house would have done that as well. Um, had a phone in the late 50s, so my dad could be contacted at work. It was red and the number was 3139. <coughs> so excuse me. Um, Brenda has a landline for a fax machine, Magic Jack. Fifty dollars for five years. Wow. One, two, three for the talking clock was it? It was called Time and Temperature in the US. Did it have the temperature on ours as well? I can't remember. Um. <coughs> Gosh, excuse me again. Right. So we need, we need to do the pocket now. So let's take our pocket fabric. I have done a video of this. Um, it'll be later on this afternoon because I need to edit it yet. And all of the, the measurements will be on there and everything. So we'll fold that right sides together and we're going to sew down each side but leave a turning gap here. <coughs> um, Dorothy, I remember precisely last time using a phone, but it was 11 years ago in Poland. The last public phone was connected in 2017. See, a lot of ours have been disconnected. I'm, I'm not sure if the one over the road works, actually, because you, you never need to use them these days um, here. Um, but I was listening to an article on uh, Radio 4 a few weeks ago, and they were saying that, you know, in, in some areas, um, they have to keep the phone the phone because there's not very good landlines or mobile services. Um, but a lot of them have been turned into defibrillators, haven't they? A doll's eye switchboard. Uh, Jenny used to queue up down our local shop to use a phone box. Never had one for years after that. We had a public phone box across the road from our house. Mum's sister used to call it and passers-by would not... Oh, <laughs> I think that used to happen a lot. It's a phone to send a telegram. Oh, remember telegrams? BT Busby. That was a bird, wasn't it? Was that a bird? Oh, hello, Karen in Nova Scotia. Welcome along. Just woke up. So let me just make sure I've sewn that in a straight line. No, I didn't. Because that's what happens when you talk and sew at the same time. It's better. Okay. <coughs> 18 inch zips. I didn't know. We were out of stock, Deirdre. I shall ask my daughter. Um, zips. Unless she's watching our zips back. I think we'll need to order some. But I'll ask her. Use the one around the corner. Stood waiting for the family to ring. Do you remember um, like the pirate radio stations, Radio Luxembourg? I, they used to do, because um, that, that was the one thing, I had a, a radio, a wireless, 
um, one of those little ones that my mum bought me with Green Shield stamps. We went to Nottingham and cashed in the stamps. My sister had a camera and I had a radio and I wasn't allowed to listen to it at night. So I'd, I'd be under the covers listening to Radio Luxembourg. And they were doing um, some kind of competition uh, where they played a record backwards and you had to guess what it was. And the number of times, they used to do it every night, the number of times I'd sneak downstairs because the phone was at the bottom of the stairs and the living room was over there and really quietly try and dial the number because I knew what the answer was. I don't think I ever won anything. No, it's a top. It's just a top, I think. I don't know where it was from, this one. Probably Marks and Spencers. Thank you. Radio Caroline. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't listen to Radio Caroline. It's Luxembourg for me. Can't remember who the DJs were. Siri on your phone to take a note. Never thought about Siri. See, I've got a hole in it now. That's sewing wobbly for you. <clears throat> I'll just re-sew over that bit. Daughter lives in Selston. I don't know where Selston is. I've not heard of Selston. Um, okay. Same hair under the sheets. I'll have a look where Selston is after um, Blood when I've not, I've not heard of it. Um, Pete Murray. Yes, he was on one of the pirate radio stations, wasn't he? Huh? Oh, Radio Caroline is still in existence. Are they still on a boat in the middle of somewhere? Listen to Radio Caroline. Before battery clocks, we had to phone the clock for the time to set the clock. Oh, oh really? Huh? I remember the Green Shield stamp shop and Maid Mary. That's the one, Anne, Maid Marion Way. We used to get lots of stuff from there. They co-opted stamps at one point as well, didn't they? Junction 27 on the M1. No, that's... Um, is that Alfreton, that kind of area? No, I'm, o I'm over in Lincolnshire, on the other side of the country. Well, I'm east of there, anyway. Not, I'm not near the M1. Oh, uh, right. So I'm just going to press this. So I'm folding the edge of the, I'm doing that, folding the edge of the opening over to make that neat. And just give that a press. <coughs> Morning, Ruth. How are you? Send me a text. Any news? DJs from Caroline went to Radio 1 when it started. Oh, did they? Um, the phone box in our hamlet is still active as we are in a mobile signal red, signal red area. Had to be adopted by our local council. Yeah, I've heard of that happening in a few, in a few areas. Um, I'm just going to top stitch across the top, so the folded edge, not the open edge. Used to fall asleep listening to the top, top 20. Was that the one? With, um, it was the DJ that used to do that. his name <coughs> uh, a girl in girl guides having to carry four pennies to make a call if needed um, loads of co-op and green shield stamps my granny didn't get around to using before they stopped I wonder if they're worth anything now okay I'm just gonna cough no it wasn't it wasn't Tony Black Alan Freeman that was it he did the top 20 didn't he does Tony Blackburn still do his early morning radio shows? I love listening to Tony Blackburn. Alan Freeman, it was, yeah. Oh, right. It's supposed to be sewing. Was the top ten in the afternoon? I don't know. Fluff, that, yeah, Fluff Freeman. Prince of Radio Luxembourg, Mr Prince of Radio Luxembourg used to live in the big house across the road from us when we moved here in 1999. Really? Huh? Right. So, let's fold this up to a roundabout where it's going to be, which will be about six inches from the top, I think. <coughs> or thereabouts. So, that's six inches and fold up there. And make sure it's straight. And I'm just going to crease across the bottom here. Plan to use pinch linen mix. That would, yes, I think that would be nice, Laura. She should look quite, quite rosy. I think that's a nice idea. Pinch li peach linen for Maddie. Nice idea. Tony Blackburn on Radio Two Two Six Eight. Uh, yes, I do like this one too. Still there, good. Okay. 
So I'm going to place the pocket above that crease line there and let's do that one and a half inches and just make sure it's sitting centrally as well. So I'll stick a couple of pins in that to hold it in place. Like that. And I will sew, that's not quite straight to me, <coughs> down each side and across the bottom. That'll sew the opening closed as I'm sewing across there. If you wanted to, you could put a dividing line down the centre and make it into, um, into two pockets. Arnold, Arnold the dog, that was on the, the children's hour on Saturday morning, wasn't it? They don't do kids radio nowadays, do they? Lorraine, I'm making, just making a quilted pouch. I have done a YouTube video for it, which I'll put on later on this afternoon when I've edited it. Um, do you know the... Oh, talking to Linda. Right, so back stitch just across the top of the pocket to secure the seam. And we'll just sew around the edge of the pocket. So I'll stop with the needle down in the corner. There's my opening look. So this is going to close when I sew this over here. And back down this side. <coughs> yeah, you heard him, just didn't you, Arnold the dog? Woof, woof. If I remember. Oh, Debbie's only just woken up. Morning, Princess. Morning, Star. Yeah, Pat, I suppose kids don't listen to the radio anymore, do they? They, don't, they listen to, I don't know, what do they listen to? Podcasts? I don't, I don't know. Right, now we're going to put this together. So that's how we are there. So, we're going to actually put these right sides together to start with <coughs> and sew across this bit. That's where the opening is going to be. I'm sure we could do it in the side somehow, but I haven't figured that one out yet. So just straight across the bottom. And I'm just using the edge of my presser foot as a seam allowance. So leave a gap. And back down this side. <coughs> so we've got that. Then we're going to turn this over so that it's wrong sides together. Match up the ends. Put the seam right on the edge here. Match that up there. And then where that crease line was where I'm folding the pocket, I'm going to fold that back over. All right. So you can see what the pouch is actually going to look like now. But we're not stopping there because we're going to part the top and the bottom pieces, keeping the fold in place, and then fold the top over the bottom. So the side, it actually looks like a, a W shape. Shall we do that one more time? So, oh, sorry, Claire. Um, send your dad our love, won't you? He's now in rehab and local to me, so you're going to see him shortly. Tell him we're all thinking of him. You're going to take some goodies to cheer him up. I know Patty's probably busy. I don't know what Gary's doing at the moment. Um, right, so I'll bear with him while I just zoom out a, a little bit. This may not, oh, that may be better. <coughs> So they're wrong sides together, sewn across the bottom with a turning gap, wrong sides together, fold that up. So that's how your bag's going to be, that's what it's going to look like when it's done. Then keeping the fold where it is, take the outer layer and undo it. So you've still got the fold there, but then fold this one back on top of itself. like that. 
Maggie, it's one of those, um, I didn't come up with the design for it. It's something that, it's been, been around for a long time in different sizes, but it's one of those things where I think, I'd like to try a different size. I'd like to try it with a popper instead of a, a button and a loop. I want to put a pocket on the inside. I think it was, I've made a, a sunglasses case, I think, which is already on YouTube. I think it's on YouTube, ages ago, years ago. And that was a long, thin one. And I just I'm going to make this bigger and squarer and quilt it this time as well. So I, I like to take things or things that you remember making years ago and think, well, I'd, I'd do it this way now. I'd, I'd adapt it to make it a little bit better. Um, but it is, it's, it's, an, it's an easy kind of construction. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm just going to sew all around these three sides, but not across that folded bottom. Who's got a folded bottom? <laughs> Thank you. Do you know Gaynor said that she was um, a telephonist? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think she had a telephonist voice? Oh, Gaynor, did you have yeah. a telephonist voice? Well, hello, caller. No, that's not that kind of voice. <laughs> um, the telephone box. Yeah. Uh, we live in a preservation order uh, area, and uh, and everything is preserved, so it doesn't work. Doesn't it? No, and it's part of the village, so it. it can't be removed. Oh right. So see it. Okay. So yeah, there, there's our um, there's our, our telephone box. I didn't know it got flowers around it. Mm. It's it has, it has flowers in it in the summer as well. Does it? Mm. Has it got a telephone in it then? I haven't looked in it, but it does have uh, people put potted plants inside. No, notice that. Mm. Uh, thank you. That's an old photo. So it's, uh, that's our telephone box and we have potted plants in it apparently. Who knew? Um, a beautiful sequin bag in rose sequins. Is that the, was that the same technique, Deirdre? I can't remember. Um, that was a, a long time ago. Linda wants tea and cake. Getting greedy now. She's already had the gin. Put that over there. Right. <laughs> I, I think he was trying to do a posh telephonist voice and it came out a little bit um, saucy. <laughs> we, we, I, I used to answer the phone at NatWest. My, my first, um, not my first job, my second job, I, I worked for NatWest, I worked for a bank and I answered the phones. <clears throat> NatWest Derby Marketplace, how may I help you? I can still remember some of the account numbers from there. Anyway, that was a long time ago. That was 1976. A free library. That's a nice idea, Bernadette. It's a free library where you take a book and leave a book. There's um, a bus station in one of the local villages that does that. I've left quite a few books. I don't take them. I just tend to leave them there. Right. A phone box. We do plant swaps in it. Oh, that's a nice idea as well. Yeah, it's nice that they're kept, isn't it? Even if they're not in working order, that they're kind of preserved. I wonder if red letter boxes will go the same way. Um, Rita and Brian, do you have... Who is in Texas? Sorry, I forgot your name. Do you have phone boxes in America? That aren't, weren't they yellow? Didn't you have... I uh, just have those, like yellow phone boxes with like a hood over them, not, not an actual phone box like we have where you can shut yourself into a tiny space. Oh, the layers aren't too thick, Elsie. They, although it's, um, it's got wadding in it, it's quite easy to sew through. It's not, not too thick. <laughs> no phone boxes in Wisconsin, Cathy. But did you used to have them? I wonder. Right, so that's what we've got. And my turning up is right at the other end of there. I'm sure I could have left that in the side, but anyway, that's what we've done. I'm going to trim the curves back to the seam, just to cut down on the bolt. You could use pinking shears here if you wanted to. And then we'll turn it the right side out through there. They've all been gone for a long time. Yeah, a lot of ours haven't been working for a long time, but it's quite nice to keep the um, um, the boxes, I think. Right, so let's push out the bottom bit. 
some boxes of defibrillator. Yeah, I was saying that earlier on, Alison. We, we haven't around here, but I think that's a good idea as well. But it keeps the boxes. That's the nice thing. All right, so I've got this. We need to pull these bits out here. And then we'll give that a press. <coughs> Oh yes, phone, phone boxes and smells, not too good. <laughs> of course, I was in the country, smells of flowers, even before we had flowers in, of course. Um, Doctor Who stole one and painted his blue. He did. Wasn't that a police box? All right, so let's do this. I'm just pressing with the seam right on the edge. I've still got an opening here, look. This fabric pretty. It, it is, I think it's my favourite range on the website at the moment. There we go. Mind you, every new range that comes in is a favourite range. All right, next project will be the makeup bag with scrap fabrics. Oh, I might do something with scrap fabric. Oh, I've got so m I've got so much on my mind. Once I start thinking, um, I'm going to put some time into actually planning these things out. And um, and giving you shopping lists and everything before we get sewing. Um, but at the moment, I've got a couple of pallets of boxes of books that I need to sign for Create and Craft, so that's going to be taking up the rest of my weekend. I just remember to have an English phone box in one of our shopping centres. Do you? Just a decorative one. Oh, wow. That would be a perfect muddy dress. i tell you what I have made out of it, and I can't show you yet because it's not quite finished, um, is your next month's Half Yard club project main project and it's a mouse and he's about this big and it's called PJ because he's wearing a pajama top or a nightshirt and I've made it out of this fabric for one of them the video I'm going to do a blue and white stripe fabric so I love traditional pajamas on there and he's gonna have a little sleeping bag and um, gives a, a list to prepare for the live sew along. Yeah, I do I do that for the um, the half yard club sew alongs. The, the next one's gonna be I think it's the twenty eighth, the last Saturday of the month. Um, I don't know what we're making yet. I don't know what we're making. Anyway, right. So that's how we are now. Com by complete coincidence, my lines have lined up. That's, I could have said that was a plan, but then I'd have to, have to explain how to do it, and I, I, don't, I can't. Um, <laughs> but that's quite nice. So I've got the opening there, which I've ironed shut, and I'm going to top stitch all the way around here and all the way around the edge of the flap. So start here. So where you come to the corner here, I'm going to go across the seam like that. And that's where I'm going to start. So let's do this. And quite close to the edge, so no more than a, a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And just take your time going around the curve. And there. So I'm concentrating now, I'm not looking at your comments for a minute. So when you get to here again, let's just open that up a little bit so I can get into the scene can't see what I'm doing and then we'll sew across the top of this like this <coughs> made a similar one of the workshops at the NEC a few years ago oh that would have been a while ago I wouldn't have done workshops for a long long time I may go to the um, the stitch festival I think they call it which is the one in Islington next month let me just let me just have a look at my email asking me to go bear with me a second because i've got dates and everything on here um where are you there we go so it's the the stitch festival at islington and it's the 23rd to the 26th oh it's march it's not next month it's march and i will be on the search oh or will i I'll have to let you know on the Search Press website. It's a website. Stand. So I thought I might pop along there if anyone wants to come and say hello. I shall confirm when I've rechecked what the dates are because those dates ring a bell for some reason. But yeah. So yeah, let me know if you're going to go. I shall, 
I shall post or I shall let you know here live if I'm going to be there. So you can come and, come and say hello. Uh, might see if Kim wants to come as well. I haven't, I haven't mentioned it to him yet. Uh, what size needle are you using? Because it's too thick for a 7 to eight, eight. Is it? Um, it's not actually that thick, Leslie. Try it. I've just got whatever the machine came with on this one. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's just a universal needle. I don't tend to take much notice of the sizes. If it's too thick, use a denim needle. Right, just snip, snip off these threads before I show you. Just making a pouch, Lizzie. Oh, almost finished now, actually. Uh, snip those away. When you'd fit a magnetic snap. Carol, I would fit that if you're going to use a magnetic snap before you sew the whole thing together. Um, so when you... When we sewed across here and left a gap and then folded it, I'd fit it then because then you can see exactly where that's going to go. And you, yeah, so you'd fit to the lining on one side and the outer on the other side. So you'd fit the, the smaller part of the clasp here and the larger part wherever it folds over. But if you do that before you actually sew it together, because you need to put the backing on it, um, and make sure you leave enough room for a seam allowance as well. So put it at least an inch from the top here. Doesn't matter so much with poppers because we're going to put them on now when we're finished. So I'm going to go back in a little bit so you can see that a little bit closer. There we go. Um, Julie says Islington shows fabulous but getting there was horrible. I d I'm not sure what they're like on parking now. There is a car park next door, isn't there? Um, Jeanette, mine is a Juki DX7. I love it and I got it from Franklin's online. Um, yes, yeah, Ju Juki DX7 Anne, and they will have it on Create and Craft on Seamless Sunday next week. They're out of stock at the moment, um, but they will have it back on Seamless Sunday next week, next Sunday, and they'll, they'll be doing the split payments on it then. So if you wanted to have a look at it then. Um, I'm not going to demo it because I don't know all the features of it as yet. Somebody was asking me how the alphabet works. Oh, I don't know. I haven't used it. Um, but I'd, I'd, th the, reason, the reason I bought it, and you've probably heard this story a million times now, um, it was being sold on Crate and Craft when I first started doing Seamless Sundays, and I'd never seen it before. And at the time, my Janome was due to go in for repair. And I thought, you know, I'd, I'd really like a new sewing machine. I've had that one for donkey's years now. And because I use it every day, and it's my job, um, I wanted something that was really quite substantial. I wanted something that was quick. I wanted something that would cope with being used every day, that would cope with different layers of fabric, that was easy to use, easy to thread. And I actually phoned up um, George at Franklin's and asked him which would be the best one for me. And, and my words to him were, I want one that will cope with me. And he suggested this one, so, um, so I bought it. And it's fabulous. It's, uh, so far, it's done everything I've asked for. It's quick, it's smooth, it's easy to thread. It doesn't shake all over the table. It's got a huge extension table that comes with it as well. Um, but I've only used it for what I need to use it for. I haven't experimented with lace. Well, I didn't know it did that. So I'll try and make some time to get my head around some of these stitches. Has anybody got one of these machines? What What is... I wonder if I can show you that. Mm. Right. Hold the light caller. <laughs> Going back to telephonies. Um, this may not work. So I'm trying to get the camera back. Those stitches on the top right hand side there. That look like lace. How does that work? Amazing. Ooh. There you go, I've done that now. Just knock, knocking everything off all over the place. Yeah. Anyway, I'll have a play with that before next week if I get time. Um, Rita needs my attention. Rita! Um, how far is the Stitch Festival? Oh, it's in London, Elsie. It's quite a way. You're probably talking a seven hour train journey maybe a five hour train journey. It's a long way from Edinburgh. Um, I don't know if I've been to the Stitch Festival before. Has anybody been to the Stitch Festival? Is it worth, Rita, 
uh, Elsie coming all the way from Edinburgh to London to the Stitch Festival. Um, is that Newark in Nottinghamshire? The Newark Quilt Show. I didn't know Newark had a quilt show. Next Friday and Saturday. Oh. Won't be able to do that one, I'm afraid. Elsie and I want to get to the USA for a workshop. <laughs> that would be a rather expensive workshop, Rita. <laughs> What's the black button at the front of the machine for? At the bottom right. Oh, that's not a button. That's where the knee lifter goes in. Um, haven't got it here. I don't think I've got it here. I might have it here. I don't use it. Um, yeah, so I don't know where it is. Um, but it's the... When you, when you put that in, it puts like a hook underneath the table and when you move your leg to one side and push against it, it lifts the foot up and down. So I think the idea is if you're free motion quilting, you don't want to take your hands off your work, you can just do it with your leg and the foot goes up and down. Um, it takes lots of money, so it's tempting to buy lots. Buy, buy, I have a Juke, I bought it from Whitley Bay on a year's interest free. That's a good idea. Elsie uses a knee lift all the time. No, I've never used one. I think I'd, I've, I've only recently had a machine that had one, and I'm so used not to using it, not using it, then I never did. Um, half a metre of fabric for Maddie, Sandra. We have... Um, that's my wedge wood saucer. Um, I haven't got the fabrics here. We've, uh, Kim's going to do a quick video, I think, for the website of the different types of, or the different colours of flesh coloured fabric that we have on the website to compare for you. I don't know if she's done that already. We've got some sand um, Tilda doll fabric back in stock again. So we've got quite a few different colours that you could use there. See the lace stitch in solid backing leaves lace ribbon. Does it? But you have to choose 72 and 73, or 75 mirror image 74 and 75 again. So you're joining three stitches together. It's a nice idea. Might have a play with that. Should we get this bag finished? Right. Um, rule up. So we're going to put the popper on the outside first. So I measure the halfway mark, so my bag now measures eight and a half inches, so we'll go for four and a quarter and an, an inch from the end of there. I'm just going to plug, unplug my iron before anybody shouts at me. <coughs> um, and we'll have a popper, I think I'll go for, oh, that one works well, doesn't it? So with these, you'll have only two pointy bits and then one that sticks out and one that goes in. Like that. Those colours match really well. And then you may need a, a pointy thing to make a hole because we're going through wadding. Don't make the hole too big. Um, or... Just use the point on this because it um, they are very very sharp. Um, Megan, height or length first? Height height or length the same thing. If you're wh whatever you make when you see measurements, it's across first. So the width of whatever it is is first, and then the length, and then the, there's a depth. That's the third measurement. So if you're making a pair of curtains and they're 60 by 54, they'll be 60 inches that way, 54 inch on the drop. Um, when you're making something like this, and I said that it was um, 10 inches across and 21 inches down, your measurements would read 10 by 21. So it's always the width is going to be the first measurement that you see. We do have the poppers on the website, Julie, yes. Um, okay, so let me go on this camera because you might be able to see clearer. So I've poked that over the mark and just pressed the fabric down around the edge just so that you've got a good, a good amount of that spike coming through. Then we'll take one half of the popper, it doesn't matter which, and sit that over the top with the spike coming through the middle. And just hold that in place while you get your tool. And the black bit at the bottom is a cup shape. So we're going to wiggle that underneath the spiky part so that that's all lined up. And just make sure that it is lined up, that you haven't got any of the, the top bits sticking out. 
and then we'll give it a squish. You don't have to squeeze too hard. And that squashes the spike that's come through the middle and, and it just lays it out. And that's really, really secure now. Now, because that's now in place, I can measure exactly where the second half needs to go just by folding that over. So I'm going to lift that up and just make a little mark under here. <coughs> And I can just belt and braces to make sure it's in the middle by measuring again, and that's perfectly central at four and a quarter inches, the same as I did the top. Make my hole. Again, you might not need to use a tool. Where did I put the mark? There it is. All right. And this time, we're going to put the spike a bit from the back to the front. So again, just push that out. Make sure you've got a decent amount of spikage. So press the fabric all around it. See it sticking up there. And then the second half as the class goes over the top. And squish there too. Thank you, Margaret. I, I have made the video of this, so it'll be on later on this afternoon. So wiggle that around again until you've got the whole of the, the thing underneath there and squish it. If you squish it slightly to one side, then this bit will collapse and then it will have quite a job trying to get it back off again because these are really, really secure. Okay, and then that fastens over there and a good squish and that's fastened. But considering, you know, it's just a couple of bits of plastic squished together, that gives you a really nice, secure finish. And if you just have a look at the pockets on the inside, again, you could have put a divider down there if you wanted to, but that's a handy little pocket for you, and that's quite a good size as well. Um, poppers, yes, great for small kids' items. They're very difficult to get off. Um, as I was saying, if you... Um, if they're not lined up perfectly and you squish to one side by, by mistake, shall I do it? Let's see if I've got a scrap of fabric. Um, they're quite difficult to remove, which is brilliant. That's not a scrap, is it? Yeah. So let's take a colour that I don't, I don't use black very often. Colour that I don't mind wasting. There we go. So... I'll go on that one. I'll do it through two layers because you'd never do it through one, would you? Um, so let's push that through. So these spikes are really strong. So you can push it into the fabric. Take your time and just get as much of that spike through as you can, like that. And then let's get that. I'm doing this wrong deliberately, okay? So I'm just going to sit that in the cup and sit that over the top and it's not quite matching up and squish it. Whoops. That's not gone through. I didn't do that quite enough. Let's try again. Do you know, when you want to do things wrong, it never happens, does it? Oh, but it squished that anyway. Do, I'm doing this. I, I'm going to do it. Um, get another popper. Let's do it again. Right. Oh, it's done it right. Anyway, very difficult to get wrong. But if I wanted to get that off, you know, if you're worried about children and poppers, it's actually ripping the fabric. It's, it hasn't come apart. So to get it off, I would get an old pair of scissors, which I haven't had have no pair of scissors. You'd have to get a pair of scissors or a knife or something and get it under there and cut through it. So yes, for kids, I, I, th I think they're great. I mean, if, if you're not too sure, then just really give it a tug like I just did there, but there's, they're, they're very difficult to get off. Um, looked like a write-off, but it turned out fine. Now I'm going to make this see you later. 
all right, okie doke, Sophie, you got it's okay. Um, embroider on the go, that's a good idea. Debbie, put the snaps sideways under the press and pull down the folds then in half and then you can remove them. Oh, okay. Sideways under the press. Oh, that's a good idea. Ah, so you put it under there that way and squish. Not tried that one before, that's a good idea. Difficult to get that, even if you get it off centre. Yes, I know. Replace the duvet buttons with poppers. That's a good idea. Yes, the tool is on the website, Linda. It comes in the kit with the poppers as well. I don't don't think we've got the tool on its own. It just comes with the poppers. Um, right, go by now, says Dawn. <laughs> um, do you need a tool? You do need the tool, Gainer. Yes, you will need a tool for these. But they're, they're metal. They're really strong and sturdy. Um, we do occasionally have the, just the re re replacement poppers in, so you'll only need to buy one. But they're, it, even if you, bought that, if you bought that on their own, they're not, they're not very expensive. So even if you had to buy a whole other set if we haven't got them on their own. A screwdriver works well. That's a good idea. Um, so yes, Linda, we do, I don't think we've got the tool on its own. It's just with the poppers. What attachment do you wallop your f with your floral hammer? What attachment do you wallop with your floral hammer? Those were the um, eyelets, weren't they? When you're making eyelets or metal um, press studs. I, I, use, I use my floral hammer. <laughs> that doesn't come out very often. Um, I'll see you Wednesday then. Yes, Helen. Oh, hi, Tom. <laughs> You've got the whole family watching. Um, that's all right, Joe. Thank you very much. I was angry with myself the other day, says Jill. I've done my first a block, block of the month. I use pink fabric instead of green. Do you think I'll have enough fabric left at the end to redo both blocks correctly? Um, do you know, I, I, you have pink instead of green. Does it really matter if you use, let me have a look, if you use pink instead of green, does it matter? So there's your first block. <coughs> I wouldn't redo them, you know. I'd leave that in pink. I don't think that would matter at all. Um, and I think you should have enough fabric left. Melissa very rarely gives an exact measurement with nothing left over. But we do have, um, we will have the fabrics on the website, like forevermore. So if you, wait until you finish. We'll still have some if you run out. But I'm not, I think that'd be fine. I would, I would not redo them. And for your pinks, I reckon you'll have enough. A fat quarter of pink, isn't there? Maybe you won't have enough. I'll have a look through the blocks and see what you could replace it with. Because maybe if there's another block, uh, if you use green instead of pink, then you could maybe do that one with pink instead of green. I think that would work. So just swap them over. I think that would be absolutely fine. Um, right. Thank you, Debbie. It's them. Yes, eyelets. Those were... Okay, so that's what we made today. That's what that's the one in a different fabric that I'm going to be um, putting on YouTube later on this afternoon. Don't forget if you want to get hold of any of those kits for the um, the Madison bags and the, the the ones that we had on Create and Craft the other day. We have now got them on the website. Um, if you wanted to order them and put your name down to keep informed if we do sell out, because we will be getting more stock in probably by the end of the week. So I'm expecting those to go soon anyway. Um, Rosina loves her poppers. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Let me just have a look over here and just make sure we've got everything done there. So I shall see you um, as a book on the website sold out. I don't think so, Karen. I only put some back in stock on Friday. If it has, we'll get some more. Um, because it's a new book, we can we can have as much stock as we want there, so that's good. Maggie can't tune in on Wednesday, but we'll see you next Saturday. Remember, next Saturday we're going to be making the nappy stroke um, baby wipe pouch. And thank you, Susan. Make nice gift pouches. Oh, you've gone, sorry. Yeah, so thank you for joining me today. Wednesday we're going to be doing mitered corners, and I'll see if I can get some different types of wadding, if you've got any that we can have a look at as well. Thank you, Linda. Um, Deirdre's desperate for 18-inch zips. <laughs> I shall have a word with my daughter after, th after the show. 
um, and we'll get that done. So yeah, I'll see you again Wednesday. So I've got Wednesday here at four o'clock and then next Saturday, 11 o'clock in the morning. And next Sunday is the Seamless Sunday on Create and Craft, the six hour long show. So those are dates to put in your diary at the moment. So I shall see you again soon. Thank you for joining me. You take care and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye bye. <laughs>